see the stars in the yellow colours and fame and glory are out after the leader then age of aquarius rip van winkle golden sword being gathered in by see the stars now the stamina questions will be answered inside the final furlong see the stars from fame and glory rip van winkle late on the scene down the outside see the stars will complete the guineas and derby double See the Stars won the Investec Derby from fame and glory, tight for third between Rip Van Winkle, master of the horse who charged home. Hello and welcome to bettingnews.foilsports.com. I'm Nicola McGeady and I'm joined by our spokesman Leon Blanche. Hi Leon. How you doing Nicola? Leon, it's going to be a fantastic weekend of racing ahead and the one race we're all going to be watching is the Arc de Triomphe. See the Stars is the superstar of the race, yet to lose a race. What, who's going to challenge? See the Stars, fame and glory possibly? Yeah, See the Stars is the superstar in the race and that's why he's the 6-4 to four on favourite. He's won five consecutive Group 1s every single month since May and now he's bidding to win six in a row. The ground is going to be good for him, that's why punters have backed him and that's why he is the odds on favourite. You did mention one horse there that surely uh, plenty of people will back each way and that's mm-hmm. fame and glory. Winner of the Irish Derby over a mile and a half, second in the Irish Champion Stakes over a mile two, to see the stars but stepping back up to the mile and a half is sure to suit this son of Monju. Conduit and uh, winner of the King George for Sir Michael Stout of course he came to himself at the back end of last year when he won the English St. Ledger over a mile six then went to the Breeders Cup and was successful over a mile and a half he's just been clipped from eight to one into seven to one and of the French horses Stasalita has been supplemented for the race and um, she's very very good but I was a little bit disappointed with her last run when she was beaten by Dari Me, but the stewards reversed the decision in the race. If she can improve, she may get into a place. But the horse I do like, at big enough odds, to maybe finish in the front three, is Vision Data. He won the Prince of Wales stakes at Royal Ascot, a very competitive race it was when he had behind Tartan Bearer, who's a stable mate for Conduit. And I think stepping up to the mile and a half shouldn't um, harm him that much. He won the French Derby last year, so he should be okay. Vision d'Etat, 12 to 1 each way would be my selection. Each way but I do think the favourite. Yeah, today, he's then. just very, very hard to beat. Okay, moving on to the Prix de Cadran, okay? Casper Bliss is the favourite. Do you think Yates is going to challenge? Yeah, listen, like Yates is a grand old warrior now. He's mm-hmm. eight now, and he's still. It's right? his last appearance. Um, he is a stallion. And it's a remarkable training performance by Aidan O'Brien to actually keep this horse in training as an eight-year-old. Whether he can do it, it was a disappointment. But if you look back to how he ran in Ireland before he went to the uh, Royal Ascot meeting, I would rule out his run in the Irish St. Ledger because the ground was atrocious that day. Yates doesn't act on any ground except good or quicker. He's going to get that um, in Longchamp on Sunday, but I don't think he's going to win. I think the horse has become a little bit intelligent now and he's holding something back for himself. Kasbah Bliss was a superb performer over the hurdles for Mr. Duman, but interestingly enough, he has said in the week that this horse will remain on the flat for the entire season. Now that to me is a huge pointer. They really believe that this guy has plenty of talent on the flat. The rest of them, Alandi could be one that has just crept under the radar. Trained by John Ox, winner of the Irish St. Ledger. And if anything that day, the mile six was almost a little bit too short. He's a pure out and out stayer. This is two and a half miles at Longchamp. It found Yates out last year when he finished fifth in the race. I just don't think he gets the two and a half mile at Longchamp. And I think Alandi at seven to one is a fantastic each way bet. It could be a great day for John Ox and Michael Canan. They could have the winner of the Ark and they could have the winner of the Cadran. A landy for me at 7-1 to one is a cracking each okay, way bet in the Cadran. So to sum up the weekend, you're going to go with Vision to Ta 12-1 to one each way. Yep. In the Arc de Triomphe, then the Prix de Cadran, you're going to go with a landy at 7-1 to one yeah, each way. Yeah, each way as well at 7-1 to one because it will be hard to beat Casbah Bliss, but at 7-1, to one, it's a decent bet. Thanks, Leon.